Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got uh, kind of an interesting video. We're going to do uh, a review of the uh, new and uh, unobtainable We Production Shamwari, uh, the original design by Gareth Bull. And we're going to compare it to an actual Gareth Bull Shamwari. Oh my gosh, that was a terrible. There we go. Uh, so I've already reviewed the custom Shamwari. This is a very popular knife. A lot of you guys know, you know, there was demand for the price to be brought down because these are both expensive and unobtainable. And then, you know, a while back there was rumors he's going to make a production one. And then they finally did do a production one and we made it. Uh, and I understand that, you know, people are upset about how that was handled and disgruntled. They didn't get their, I'm not going to talk about that. We're going to directly compare this with this and do a review at the same time so that you guys don't have to sit through a separate video where I compare them both. Um, these knives were actually uh, sent to me by two wonderful people um, who have been involved with the channel for a while. Uh, both on Instagram at KyleRobert610 sent me his Shamori back so that I could actually compare it. So thanks so much for doing that again, Kyle. And then at Floydian214, uh, also on Instagram, he was the gentleman who sent me the Wii version of the Shamori. Um, now there is an in between, you know, I understand there's a field grade, um, uh, Shamwari and just so you guys know, I, I talked with Kyle about this. It seems like these, uh, the Shamwari, the, the actual ones start somewhere around $700. If you have the option to buy them direct from Gareth Bull, that is generally not the case. Uh, usually secondary market will charge substantially more. This is the standard full titanium version. These come in at about $950 direct from Gareth, Gareth Bull. So with this being such a popular design, both functionally and aesthetically, and during the whole front flipper craze, it's understandable that people wanted a more obtainable uh, production version of the knife. And uh, I know that there's a lot of people out there wanting to know, you know, how does it compare with the real thing? Um, so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, let's go ahead and first off, um, thank you so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. Uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's of course a link down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. So this guy is about the same size as the small Shamwari. And I understand you guys probably that would have, you know, been helpful if I had the small one here, but I, I don't because, you know, these things aren't, they're not like in a gumball machine. <laughs> not, not very common, right? And I think, um, you know, the obvious thing here is, well, this is an excellent size. Um, this screams for a larger one uh, to be made, and I would imagine that that will inevitably come down the pipeline. Um, but this is what I have here today, is the full-size custom variant to compare quality-wise with the uh, Wii variant. So let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. I'm going to try and get through this part as fast as I can. Overall measurement coming in at 7 inches overall, maybe a hair longer. Blade length coming in at 3 inches on the dot. Cutting edge coming in at about 28 Let's do some size comparisons here real quick up uh, against the Ontario Rat Model 1. The Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco uh, PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, we have the Spyderco Para 3. The Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. So it's just a quarter inch longer. Uh, you know, then the, the Shamwiri here, as most people like to refer to it as. Substantially more cutting edge, though, on the uh, production Shamwari, for sure. Uh, how's the action of this guy? Boy, guys, the action. I was going to, really, I was going to say, you know, before I handled this, I thought one of the defining qualities of the, um, the actual Shamwari is the action. It's just so unbelievably gl glassy smooth, but it's controlled. Now, what we have here is a smaller blade right? And it's a production variant. So I fully expected this to feel nowhere close to the custom. Now, understand, this is still better. The custom is still better. It's still smoother. It's more controlled. It fe you can feel the excess that went into it. But this is impressive. It's not quite fall shut, but it's, it is basically frictionless. And yeah, I mean, it's honestly, it's very impressive considering it actually does lock out solid. It feels like the action, the way that it feels, it honestly feels like it wouldn't lock up solid. That's what I thought. Oh, it's smooth. It's not going to lock out solid, right? No, it does. Blades light, frictionless, nearly fall shut. Very, 
Very impressive action. Very easy to engage the um, front flip around that guy. And I think this is even, I wonder if I can, let's see if I can top flip it. It's a little bit curved over. <laughs> Not on camera anyway, because of the angle of the camera. But yeah, very, very, very impressive on the action. Uh, let's go and do a hardware check, get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver, two items that are uh, very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down at the very bottom of my description under knife maintenance. So check that out. Uh, let's go ahead and check the pivot here. I am 99% sure that that is going to be a T8. Yes. And back here, unfortunately, we have T6. And I'm just going to tell you guys right there without even pulling it out. That's a, that's a T6. Okay, no big deal. Hardware's minimal. I don't like T6. You know, uh, I'd rather it be T8 or higher, but it's not. It's it's just not that big of a deal. It's not a deal breaker ever. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. That's an excellent um, element of this knife. So thickness, and we do have contoured titanium scales in this guy. Thickness is coming in at, uh, it's a little teeny tiny bit thinner than the pair of three. Um, uh, let's do height up against Spyderco PM2 PM and pair of three, two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about. This is a winner. It's a little pill-shaped knife. Uh, there's absolutely nothing about this knife that is cumbersome. It's just an easy in and out of the pocket knife. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside here. So this knife does run on bearings. There's no milling on the inside of the titanium. And uh, I don't think that it necessarily needs it though, you know, in terms of either weight reduction or, uh, um, I can't remember the other thing. I was looking for my calipers. Um, don't need it for weight reduction or balance. I think it's just fine. Blade stock thickness on this guy coming in at under 120 thousandths, maybe closer to 115 thousandths, something in there. So we don't have a lot of, you know, material here. There's not a lot of excess that's going to cause it to weigh very much. And as you can see right here, it is under three ounces. The only people who are going to call this heavy are people who claim to be able to tell the difference between two and a half ounces and one and a half ounces, which even if they can, that's a trivial amount of weight. <laughs> to me, anything that's under about four ounces, I consider to be lightweight and anything that's under three ounces is not even something that I will take the time to care about. So if you really, really, really love the bug out, the mini bug out, the pair of three lightweight, perhaps, you know, I mean, I think the pair of three lightweight is around the same weight, right? But if you get really hung up on all of the little, you know, uh, ratios and dimensions and things like that, I suppose you could nitpick that into the ground, but it, it seems meaningless to me. This is by my definition, a lightweight uh, knife that is not cumbersome and it actually lines up with that whole ounce and inch thing on the blade. So that's great. Uh, have we talked about everything? Yeah, I think that we have. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a direct comparison here real quick. So like I said, there are different versions of the, uh, the full version. By the way, these are made in South Africa. Uh, if you guys have, uh, you know, been a part of my channel or been paying attention to the knife world here lately, South African knife makers have been killing it. Holy cow. You can have uh, a custom made knife uh, from a lot of these. Sorry about that. My phone cut out right in the middle of the, re of the review. Anyways, um, I was talking about how uh, amazing uh, some of these South African knife makers have, have been doing lately. You can get, um, you know, ultra quality, um, full custom knives. Um, for hundreds of dollars less than we're used to, you know, paying for the equivalent in an American custom knife or even, you know, some custom knives that are manufactured, or I'm sorry, created elsewhere, right? Not necessarily just, just America. But um, yeah, a lot of the South African custom knives that I've seen here lately have just been absolutely wonderful. And um, this knife, I think because of its, you know, sim uh, simple aesthetic, right? It's clean looks, the fact that it's a front flipper and the fact that it's just been hailed as a, just a perfect, you know, looking and feeling knife, you know, became very, very popular. Now, uh, I don't think Mr. Bull is able to quite keep up with demand. And so the idea of the production Shamwari, you know, eventually came to fruition um, with his uh, collaboration with Wee Knives. And uh, truthfully, guys, to cut this uh, down, you know, not make it as long as it needs to be, yeah, these two are extremely similar in terms of overall aesthetics. There are little differences like, um, you know, this anodized, essentially it's the, um, well, in, in the case of the actual chamois, it's the over-travel disc because there is no 
steel lock bar insert. This has a steel lock bar insert, which I believe is probably what's catching on this uh, disc up here, but it's in the same place. I mean, dimensionally, I mean, everything down to the pocket clip, right? Yeah, it, it's the same. Even how they set it in and how they angle it and everything like that. I would say, you know, there's just a little bit more smoothness on little areas like this, um, whereas here it's just a little bit more angular. The screw is a more generic screw. And then on this side, it's actually just a polished and sort of, I guess they they button headed that uh, the other end of that screw, which is nice, right? Little things like that. Now I know inevitably, inevitably there's going to be somebody going, you know, if it's M390 and titanium and it feels about the same, why would you ever pay X amount more for it? Here's the thing. I actually just covered this. I mean, to go off on a tangent here for a second, I just talked about this in the comment section with somebody else. Um, yeah, 99% of the knife community feel you're not saying anything, you know, it's not a revelation for anybody. Yeah, 99% of the knife community, you know, given the given the choice, you know, if it feels similar, right, it's using the same materials. And even if there are little bumps in quality and things like that, yeah, most people are, are going to opt for the, um, the production version because it just costs us money doesn't change the fact that there are still the people who are who are able to and willing to spend the money on the Shamwari, the real one, are completely and totally unswayed by people who are like, why would you ever do it? You're not changing anybody's mind. People who are going to agree with you or have already made up their mind on the matter. There are enough people out there who can justify this, who have handled it, have experienced it, have experienced enough from different price ranges, right? That they keep that demand up. It's not like, you know, Gareth Bull is really having to try and convince people, right? No, it's, 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 they, they, they're their own group of people. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're unsweat. You're not changing their minds, right? It's just how it is. Uh, me, somebody who I've, who has handled, you know, knives anywhere from the super low end budget, $20 material all the way up to $3,000 knives. Yeah. I understand justifications for the higher end stuff, right? Whether it's just the fact that, uh, you know, your tastes have, um, you know, reach this tier um, where you can't uh, you can't scratch the itch without spending a little bit more money uh, or you enjoy the feeling of exclusivity, right? For whatever reason, you know, you justify it how you want it. Just it is what it is. I myself cannot personally justify knives eh, about just teetering a, a tad over a thousand dollars. The most money I've ever spent on a knife was about, I think, thirteen hundred. And even then I felt really uncomfortable. I'm more comfortable in the four hundred to six hundred dollar range. Um, I enjoy budget knives. I, you know, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand why people want these, you know, but I don't want anybody laboring under the delusion that simply by leaving a comment going, how could you ever put, you know, you are, you're, you're literally changing nobody's mind. It is a waste of a comment and it is one of the most common things. I remember looking through Jim Skelton's comment section six years ago, and it was like the same, the same kind of stuff. Guess what? Nothing is changed. In fact, that part of the knife world and the knife world in general has become more popular. People are more willing now to spend more money in any tier, right, than six years ago. So not only is it, you know, it not changing anything, it's actually, you know, in my opinion, from my perspective, you know, it's like I said, people are more willing to spend more money um, and everything's expanding. So it is a waste of time tenfold. But I guess if you're going to leave that comment, go ahead. <laughs> Oh my gosh, didn't I say I was going to try to keep this a little shorter? Whoops. Other little things, right? We have the zirconium pivot collar here. Um, there's going to be little touches like that. The finish, of course, on the on this one. Now, of course, there are different colors, different finishes, different materials. But, um, you know, the, the, the spine is crowned on this guy. And it's got a nice sort of uh, subdued, tumbled finish. Not what I'd call, well... Boy, it almost does look bee blessed, but it's really, it's really just sort of a concrete tumbling. This is a hand rub satin finish. Uh, factually, more goes in to this blade than this one. It costs more to make this knife than it does this one, right? Will they function the same? I mean, let's imagine they're the same size here for a second, right? Yeah, they're going to function pretty much exactly the same. Um, not a lot of people are buying this, you know, uh, that are, 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 like confused, like thinking that they're going to get more utility out of it. I think that that's what a lot of the, you know, a lot of what the um, confusion and frustration comes from. For people who have never even considered spending that much money on a knife, they're like, you know, they, they rationalize uh, this by thinking that um, the people who do buy them are thinking that they're gaining X amount of money more in terms of utility. No, that's uh, most people who spend this much money on knives. 
that's not necessarily what they're after. They want the tool to be functional, you know, as functional as it can possibly be, but they like the, the feeling of the real thing. They like knowing that extra care, extra human interaction went into it. And I would imagine a lot of them really do enjoy just having something that they know that a lot of people don't have. The irony here is that <laughs> even the production version of this knife, because of the popularity of the real thing, is as uh, essentially, you know, created another unobtainable object. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the thing. Uh, nobody's buying the expensive one thinking that they're getting a, a tool that is that much more capable. No, um, you know, the, the custom is great. It will perform incredibly well. The production is also great. It will perform incredibly well. And if there is a difference, then it'll be, you know, uh, marginal and not, not something that most people are, are able to, you know, perceive in, in day-to-day -day use, right? But, um, yeah, little teeny tiny things here. You know, the hardware is a little bit different than the real thing. I don't know necessarily if it's a more exotic uh, piece of material. We have uh, a standoff back here that uh, I suppose might be zirconium. It's probably just titanium. This one is uh, anodized titanium, right? It looks the same. Uh, the jimping looks a little bit different between this one and this one. But the chamfering areas, you know, the body of this thing, it's all the lines are largely in the same place. And I would imagine, and we are comparing the large one with the small one, um, so, you know, there are going to be uh, possibly different, you know, the, possibly the small version of the real thing was exactly like this one. Um, the interesting thing here is in the, in the, um, the production version, there's more of a flat. This one has a skinnier flat, and truthfully, compare that with the edge here. Well, they both get really, really thin, though. They really do. That's the nice thing is, it, I mean, whether you go with the production one or you go with the custom one, you really are getting some absolute insane thinness behind the edge. Looking out to the tip, uh, you know, this one's a thicker blade stock to begin with. I imagine, again, the smaller one's a little bit thinner. You can see because of how the swedge is on this guy and because of the flat and probably because of the finish, um, we're actually getting, it seems to be a more needle-like tip on the custom variant. And take that for what it is. There's just subtle differences there. Um, this one has, uh, you know, the uh, the logo has that circle around it, and then on the custom one, it just has the standard logo. Uh, on this guy, I'm not sure if it actually shows. Yeah, it shows 20 CV right there. Say M390, 20 CV, whatever. They're basically interchangeable, other than the silicone content. This one doesn't say it on there, but I believe that it is absolutely uh, M390. So. You know, it's one of those things where somebody there, there's there are a few people out there who, you know, essentially you're, you're talking to yourself. And you're like, I definitely want one of these. You know, should I seek out a production variant on the secondary market um, and, you know, risk paying a little bit more and just be happy with it and pay substantially less than the real thing? Or should I save up and buy the real thing? You got to make that call for yourself. You know, they're both excellent. Truthfully, these are both excellent knives. Um, you know, I mean, if you really, really want the full size one, well, sorry, there's not a full size one yet. You know, um, the, uh, the nice thing about the small one is, is you really can get your hands all the way around it because of the profile and it's very comfortable, right? So most people are going to be just fine with the EDC size or the more, uh, EDC friendly size one. But if you really just want the full size one, you're going to have to seek out a expensive one, you know? If you are, if this is the most beautiful design in the entire world and you're one of those people who just you know, knows subconsciously that you'll never be happy if you don't have the actual thing, right? Um, then I can tell you from experience that um, buying the production one will not scratch that itch for you. If it's easy for you to put your palm up and say, I'm never going to spend that much money on a knife, then yeah, then go with the production one. But truthfully, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're like me, the whole like ZTO 562 to the hinderer thing, right? I bought the uh, ZTO 562 and then I, you know, inevitably turned around and bought a hinderer and I actually bought multiple, you know, so the the... I still love the ZT knives, but scratching that itch essentially just became, you know, a money pit, tricking myself or, 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 you know, into thinking that I would be happy with the standard version. But, you know, this is, this is turning into a discussion, <laughs> a very opinionated discussion. But yeah, the quality of the Wii production variant is excellent, right? I'm not doing my usual thing where I'm going around and talking. It's because I've reviewed, I realized it's so similar to the real thing. I mean, my thoughts are going to be the same. This is an excellent knife. I wish it was more available, but so does everybody, right? doesn't do me any good to say that. 
I, I feel like it is an inevitability that this will again become available, and it's also an inevitability that the large version of this will become available. I asked about the price on the standard version. A couple of guys that are in my one of my groups on Instagram. And to my surprise, I, I didn't realize this. These came in at $275. I feel like that's a touch high. I, I think I would pay that for the, a large one. And I, but I feel like $240, $250 should have been the price on this guy. I mean, you know, versus other Wii knives out there, there's nothing extravagant going on. Um, so perhaps the price was uh, bumped up a little bit because they knew exactly how popular this thing was going to be. Uh, you know, I, yeah, again, I could take 250, 240 to 250, something like that. M390 and titanium for an exceptionally well-made knife. The light, the knife locks up absolutely solid. You can see it's locking up at something like 35 to 40% and is 100% dead centered. Um, the, uh, you can see actually the, uh, oops, bumped the camera. Sorry about that. The closed position stop pin is right here, but there is to my knowledge, Sorry, if we can see. Oh no, I'm I'm incorrect actually. I thought there was an internal stop. That actually does stop on the stop pin. I wonder if it's the same here. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I always assumed that there was an internal stop on this guy, but I think that it actually is. Let me look in here with my flashlight. Um, the oh, this guy. I'm sorry, guys. This guy, I can't t tell on the inside. I'm not going to take this apart, um, but it, it looks like that this um, the, the back area here has been contacting the stop pin because of that little, I'm not going to call it a blemish, but it's a little teeny tiny wear mark that's just barely perceptible. It looks like that is the case. Um, I'll say this though, for um, you know owners of the um, of this guy, you know if it's if it's rubbing you the wrong way that I'm saying it's so close, you know, the truth is is that this comes down to an overall feeling of quality. Um, having handled so many custom knives and so many amazing variants of knives, this is largely the same story. This one is substantially more money than this guy, right? Substantially more. Is there enough additional quality here to justify that additional price, right? Is it, uh, is it five, six, seven times better than this one? Ah, you're going to have to make that choice for yourself. How much you're going to spend, right? How much you're willing to spend on it, it's up to you. Is this one higher quality than this one? Yeah, hands down. Sorry, you know, fans of the of the smaller one, you know, are thinking that you, you know, got the same thing as the custom and you paid way less money and you're smarter than everybody. I'm not coming down on anybody. This is great. It truthfully is. But this is, it's it just is better. You know, I mean, it sounds silly to say that. Of course, the custom's better. But, you know, in some cases, the line is a lot more blurred. This just has an overall feeling of a full custom knife. Um, the action is a little bit better. It's a little bit smoother. It, it, it's got a little bit more of a quality lockup. This feels like a really well done production knife. This feels like an exceptionally well done custom knife with all of the little dressings and trimmings that come along with a custom knife. That is truthfully exactly how I feel. Is it worth hunting down um, <laughs> the the Gareth Bullsham Mori and paying you know fifty to a hundred percent more than what they go for directly? I would never pay twice the money uh, for a knife. I have a hard time paying five to 10% more on the secondary market uh, than what they originally went for. So, you know, if somebody's asking, you know, 50 to 100 bucks up than what they go for, yeah, sure, that's my opinion, go for it, right? But 2,000, I don't know if they still go for that, but I've heard of that happening. No, same thing with this guy, you know, just wait, guys. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just assuming that uh, eventually the, um, the, the sham Weary will eventually be brought back, you know, whether it's the small form or hopefully they do a large form. Yeah, just wait. Don't don't overpay for this guy in the secondary market. Absolutely not. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, it is excellent. This is very, very excellent. I really wanted to give my thoughts on it because I've heard so many people, you know, number one, confused about the differences like because it looked, it was like so similar. They were confused about that. Number two, upset about the way that the release was handled. And it's just, you know, this is a popular knife. There's going to be some controversy surrounding it, and perhaps I'm making it worse, but um, conclusions on this video, yeah. This is great. We need more of them. We need a bigger one, right? And 275 is a little bit much for this, <laughs> but it's excellent. If you want to hear my thoughts on the, the Shamwari, you know, the, the, a full review, you can go watch the full review on this guy. It was a shining review. It's definitely one of my favorite knives that's ever come across my 
my table, you know? Absolutely. I feel like I covered everything. I hope I got everything right. I hope I didn't make anybody angry <laughs> or uh, make anybody feel compelled to leave a big, long, uh, frustrated comment. But these are just my thoughts on this. This is really, really cool. And I'd be happy to EDC this. In fact, this to me, the smaller chamois is kind of, it, it's like a, it's like a better uh, small Sabenza. Sorry. I know that's going to make a couple of people mad, but I like the simplistic, you know, kind of, kind of dressy look of a Sabenza, but the small one has always just been too small for me in the placement of, of everything in the handle room, right? It just wasn't one that complemented my hand well. And this guy is about the same size as a small Sabenza, but it just has that room where I can get my hand all the way around. And that's really why I like it. Fidget factors off the charts. It's got a nice thin cutting edge. It's made out of premium materials. There's really nothing here to complain about except for it's got some T6 screws. It's got a slight bill of a pocket clip, right? They charged a little too much for them when they first came out and they're not available and they were gone like the moment that they became available. So very few people got them. Functionally, the knife is basically perfect. Um, I'm going to be putting the Wii Shamwari uh, the Shamwiri on my most recommended knives playlist for sure. Um, but it is based on the knife itself and not necessarily its availability. That kind of, it, it stinks, but I feel like we'll definitely see more in the future. Okay. This video has gone on long enough guys. Absolutely. Um, I think that's going to be pretty much it. I hope that you guys enjoyed, uh, this video, this upload. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.